Okay, coming in at number 10, we have the Doomsday Clock. Wanna know just how nigh that end really is? Look no further than the Doomsday Clock. The Doomsday Clock is a symbolic timepiece created in 1947 by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. The clock is a metaphor for threats to humanity, with midnight representing global catastrophe. When the clock was first started in the Cold War era, the time was already set at 7 minutes to midnight. The safest we have ever been is 17 minutes to midnight. Right now in 2019, we're 2 minutes to midnight. Great! The clock is there to represent the urgency of the problem, and with just 120 seconds to go, it's, you know, pretty urgent. Coming into number 9, we have the human faced pig. When freaky things happen, people start saying things like, ah, it's a sign of the end of the times, and to be honest, Maybe that is what's happening. That's definitely what they were saying in 2018 when a mutant pig was born in China with a shocking human like face. The pig was born in the Guangdong province and freaked out locals who were very concerned as to the wider meaning. The birth came shortly after a very similar deformed pig was born the year before. Birth defects across the board are rising in animals, but shockingly, birth rates in human babies have also risen in the UK and the US and generally across the board. Coming into number 8, we have the Arctic melting. This past week, I felt truly inspired by Greta Thunberg's address to the United Nations. She spoke at the Climate Action Summit and used a very emotive speech to call for change. The loss of our polar ice caps is just one outcome of climate change, but it's a very big one, and it's already started happening. The snows of Kilimanjaro have melted 80% since 1912. Arctic sea ice has been declining at a rate of 12 percent 8% per decade. If the polar ice caps melt completely, ocean levels would rise by 230 feet, which would cover most coastal cities. The way the ocean currents go, this would destroy New York and New Orleans, and the Philippines would lose all of their fresh water. Coming into number 7, we have Baba V's predictions are coming true. Baba! Oh, Baba Vanga, oh my goodness, I am so glad I got to speak about this absolute gem on my last day in the studio. I really feel like she's been there with me from the very beginning, so one more time, loud as we can. How does it go? Baba Vanga is a blind mystic who made a lot of scary predictions. She attributes her powers to an accident that she had when she was a teenager. Allegedly, she was lifted up into a tornado and it led her to lose her sight, but she gained the power to heal people, and it seems she gained the power to be able to see the future. Before she died, she made a number of shocking predictions that have come true, including the 9 11 attacks, the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami, the dramatic sinking of a Russian submarine. So, what of our future? Well, she says the universe will end in the year 5000, but working backwards from there, we will meet God in the year 4000, some 1000 years after humans left planet Earth and started living on another planet. Back down on Earth, the ice caps will melt in 2033, which actually sounds likely considering this list, and in 2042 there will be a freeze ray gunfight in Rome. Europe, by the way, will become a wasteland, and oh, the 45th Prez will be the last, according to Babs anyway. Mind if I call you Babs? Babs? Coming into number 6, we have Poison Smog. The Organization for Economic Cooperation believes that by the year 2050, air pollution will kill more than 6 million people a year. This increased pollution will correlate with increases in populations, which basically means more fuel burning and car use, and an increase in toxic components found in household products and building materials. Also, warmer weathers we experience as part of global climate change won't help air pollution either adding to the smog. A lot of people will suffer respiratory issues, and many will die as a result. Killer smogs are already a thing. The Great Smog of London in 1952 was one of the earliest modern day smog disasters, and it caused the death of approximately 6,000 people. Today in 2019, a toxic smog cloud in Bangkok caused the closure of 450 schools, and the air in Delhi is killing people. Things aren't 
getting better as the years go by. They're only getting worse. Coming into number five, we have antibiotic resistant bacteria. Alexander Fleming discovered antibiotics and penicillin was invented in 1928, which has saved so many lives. This was a real turning point in the history of medicine. However, 90 years later, and bacteria are mutating. Some bacteria strains are now resistant to antibiotics. The World Health Organization says that antibiotic resistance is one of the biggest threats to global health, food security, and development today. It seems the resistance occurs naturally, but human misuse of antibiotics is making it even worse. Do you know what bacteria can't kill? Coming into number four, we have robots. Robots are here, and they have been here for a while, but they're only getting more advanced, and now they're saying things like this. Oh, let's talk about something else, okay? Like cruise missiles. So, that considered, I'm thinking that maybe we've gone too far with the whole AI thing. Also, this is now happening. Military robots. So companies like Hanson Robotics and Boston Dynamics are at the front line of robot and AI development, but it seems they have manufactured some literal ghouls. The late great Stephen Hawking did say that one day robots could take over and replace humanity, and now Bina has things to say all about the nukes like we just heard, and I'm thinking that actually, maybe it is the beginning of the end. Speaking of nukes, a massive scary sign that the end is nigh, at number 3 we have nuclear weapons. Ever since the first nuclear weapon was dropped on Hiroshima in August 1945, humanity has been living in a new era. A nuclear era. An era which has led to the formation of the doomsday clock in the first place. At the height of the nuclear stockpile, there were over 15,000 nuclear weapons on Earth. There are slightly less today, but a number of countries have nukes poised and ready to go, including China, France, the UK, the USA, and Russia. As you probably know, North Korea is developing nukes too, which has caused a lot of global tension. There are some weapons in the stockpile that could destroy humanity. Humanity. Mass extinction hangs in the balance of a number of big red buttons. So speaking of those red buttons, at number 2, on our scary signs that the end is near, we have angry world leaders. A number of world leaders have threatened to annihilate other nations either directly or indirectly. They are the leaders of nations with nuclear weapons and this is terrifying. The United States, Russia, North Korea, Iran, it's a concern. Vladimir Putin, the Russian leader, has remarked that he could destroy the West in seconds, and of course, Donald Trump has boasted about his big red button. Kim Jong Un has regularly threatened the West and South Korea. Peace seems to lay in the hands of people who are really struggling to keep their cool. Not cool. Finally, coming into number one, right now we are in the middle of a mass extinction. A sign that the end is nigh. Things literally starting to drop dead, which is actually happening. We are currently amid the Holocene extinction. Right now, extinction rates are 100 to 1,000 times higher than natural background rates. Pollution, air and oceanic, overfishing, and human overpopulation are the main factors. A million species of plants and animals face extinction in the next few years. To use Greta's words, words to the United Nations, people are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing, we are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Starting us off with number 10 is the simulation. By now, I feel like honestly, since the beginning of time, people have speculated that we're living in a simulation of some kind. The technology industry has a fast growing consensus that we are in fact living in a computer simulation. According to the simulation hypothesis, we are getting very close to a time where we can realistically and accurately simulate life on Earth using advanced computers, kind of like the movie Ready Player One, except less, less gamish. And if that possibility is there, what's to say we didn't already reach that stage and we're already living inside one? And if that's true, the hypothesis claims a simulation will end when we reach the point of creating a simulation within our simulation. So our end of the world could essentially be something as simple as a new simulation, or better yet, what if someone just turned it off? Just press the button and just turn off the simulation. End the human race. In the touch of a button. What if that happened? Coming in at number 9 is 2000 SG344, which is actually not 
about the name of the new Samsung coming out. I know, I made that mistake too. Now this asteroid that's barely even bigger than a yacht was meant to be the most dangerous object in the world. At 40 meters wide and moving at the speed of 28,000 miles per hour, it was en route to hit the Earth back in 2000, but thankfully that didn't happen because then we'd all be dead and I wouldn't be here making this video. But with more precise measurements of the orbit of 2000 SG344 being done, it seems it's on course to hit Earth at the end of September in the year 2030. So we have about 10 years to figure out our plan or, you know, die. <laughs> no biggie, no pressure. Right now, NASA's been charged with sending people back to the moon more permanently to then send them to Mars from the moon. It'll be a good taster of whether Mars can be our new Earth or not. But in terms of the asteroid itself, almost all asteroids have gravity levels of close to zero, so no capsule or person can land on it unless they attach themselves to it somehow. So unless we do some Star Wars sh and shoot some arrows into the asteroid and then get on there, we're doomed. At number eight, we have a mini ice age. Now the Earth goes through warm and cold cycles and during its cold cycles previously there have been ice ages. Similarly, the sun goes through cycles as well where its solar activity drops or increases and therefore the level of heat it produces fluctuates as well. Now scientists have claimed that upcoming changes in the sun's activity could cause temperatures on Earth to plunge from 2020 to 2050. Now can you imagine it progressively getting colder and colder for 30 years? Like it's already getting colder right now for winter in Canada and I feel like death already. I mean the only pro of that is that at least the effects of global warming will be overridden by that, which will give us another 30 years to sort our sh out, so we better do it. The last time this happened, it caused the little ice age that occurred between 1645 and 1700, which caused the river Thames to freeze over countless times. During that point, there were barely any sunspots on the sun's surface, and so scientists believe the sunspot activity is slowly beginning to slow down now as well. Now, other scientists like Michael Brown, a professor of astronomy, argues that even that won't combat man made climate change, so that's just fantastic. If a 30 year ice age can't save us, we are truly truly screwed. Well we are anyway because of the impending ice age but that just isn't ideal either is it? No. Filling on number 7 slot is the flu epidemic. <laughs> As if this list can get worse and we're literally only on number 7. I love life honestly. What could go wrong? I'm like that meme of the dog that's in the house that's on fire. It's like it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> now let's just flash back for a sec. The last flu epidemic we had was a Spanish one back in 1918 dubbed the deadliest one in history. It infected 500 million people which is a third of the world's population and then ended up killing between 20 to 50 million people. It killed that many people in one year and it was first seen in Europe, then the US, then Asia before being basically everywhere. Well sucks to suck guys because according to Bill Gates and medical experts we are in fact due for another flu pandemic and not only that, we are ridiculously unprepared for it. Because of the mass transportation available nowadays like all the trains, airplanes, buses etc, the flu pandemic now could spread like wildfire and kill 30 million people in months. Like the Spanish flu killed 30 million people in a year, this could kill that many in months. Months you guys. Are you getting this? That would affect everything. Hospitals, overcrowding in that sector, the economy would go down, travel would lessen, everything would just go to sh**. We wouldn't even have a cure. Like, why are we even trying at this point? Why are we even trying? Now, and number six is genetic engineering. Now, this is a pro and a con, to be honest. Now, when genetic engineering became a thing, it was very damn popular and was seen as a new feat of human change that we hadn't encountered before. These days, tools like CRISPR have even been dubbed as the new technology that could eradicate the likelihood of birth defects and cure cancer. Like, CRISPR didn't come to play around. But the more we start changing the human genome, the worse it can get for us. Sure, it starts by improving humans, you know, making our immune system more resistant, perhaps making our body stronger or needing less sleep. But what if we unknowingly create a superhuman race that ends up persecuting and killing the old one? I.e. us. Or following from number seven, what if we just straight up design a virus that becomes unstoppable and untreatable? Like, who? Oh lord, she coming! And by she, I certainly don't mean me. I mean the end of the world. Coming in at number five is overpopulation. Now we all know what overpopulation is, I'm not gonna explain it, but let's talk about how it's real, it's happening, and it will only get worse and what that will entail. Now firstly, our natural resources are already depleting, but as the population increases, it's gonna become even more limited. Violence and aggression have already increased outside of war situations because of competition for resources, and we're not even at the final stage 
yet. Next, the environment, but we all knew that. We're already killing it with no coming back right now, and I doubt world leaders care enough to do anything about it. Fantastic. Conflicts in developing countries will increase because things like water and food are becoming harder to source, and that will also increase poverty. So really, at the rate our population is growing at, it's only about time before we become our own downfall. Can't we? At number four is the Grey Goose scenario. Completely a real scientific theory, by the way. Don't let the name fool you. Now, the Grey Goose scenario is a hypothetical scenario involving molecular nanotechnology and resulting in global catastrophe. Now, nanotechnology itself are tiny, tiny robots that are used to carry out specific functions, and scientists want to use them to prevent and cure disease. Now, this scenario posits that nanotechnology may gain the ability of self replication by accident, and then ecophagy will occur. And that word essentially means eating the environment or eating the habitation. So this nanotechnology could technically keep self replicating and consuming all biomass on earth while it does so. And we won't even be able to see it. We won't even see the thing that's taking us down, it's just going to be taking us down at a nano level. Great. Filling our number 3 slot is the cyber attack. Now let's be real, the internet has been part of our daily lives for quite a while now, and with that comes cyber attacks. You know, smaller things like credit card fraud, stealing personal information, leaking information, and hacking into things you shouldn't be. Hackers are getting more skills and if we recall back in 2017, a cyber attack hit more than 150 countries which resulted in the crippling of some of the world's largest institutions. The attack used the pet yeah malware and started swamping banks, newspapers, electricity firms and so forth. Ukraine was hit the hardest but France, Germany, the US, UK, Australia and others were also badly hit. It was masquerading as ransomware where a software essentially threatens to block, erase or publish information unless a ransom is paid. So if the damage was that bad two years ago, God knows how much they've advanced and improved since then, ready for an even worse attack. What if something else is attacked or released that could take down our entire system? Cyberly. Now at number 2 are aliens. Guys, this whole list has been me talking about how we're gonna be the reason behind the world's ending, minus that asteroid, but what if it's not even us? What if the world doesn't even wait for us to mess up? Now we've already made alien contact, let's not kid ourselves, and sure we have probably made some alliances here and there, but I'm sure there are other alien civilizations out there that do not like us or want our planet or whatever the hell. I mean they have many motives, let's be real, we, we are a planet in demand. Now their technology is better than ours, we're a Nokia in comparison to them being the Samsung Note 50. Like we are a speck of dirt in comparison, let's be real. So if one day some alien overlords are like, you know what, I think today's the day we end those pesky humans. Or you know what, I'm feeling a little ballsy today, how about we kill humans today? I just need some entertainment. Like the beings we share the world with could very well get us before we get ourselves. Which I'd prefer, I feel like that's less embarrassing than being the reason for our own downfall. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. And finally, at number one is misinformation. Honestly, these days the actual truth and facts are being shared less and less. We already know the government has hid things from us time and time again throughout history, and secondly, there's no shortage of fake news either. If our world's leaders don't even fact check their information anymore, honestly, what is the point of anyone doing it? Literally. News outlets and media publications have started caring less about facts and more about quantity and output. So honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if some fake news got out about the world's ending or resources ending and people just started killing each other and stealing while all the world leaders are just sitting at their desk like that Mr. Burns meme like <laughs> like if enough people in enough countries believe something fake and condemning we'd be done for honestly they'd, they'd go berserk. Starting off this countdown we have the prophecies. A biblical preacher believes that the end of the world is near as almost all the prophecies laid out in the book of Revelation have been fulfilled meaning the apocalypse is going to happen soon. Basically in the book of Revelation the the seven seals are the apocalyptic vision seen by John of Patmos. And apparently we have one more prophecy to fulfill before we reach the seventh seal which marks the end of the world. Here are some of the seals that we have fulfilled. The sixth seal talks about an earthquake, followed by the sun turning black and the moon turning blood red, and mountains and islands disappearing underwater. But he believes that this happened with the Lisbon earthquake in November of 1755. A very disastrous earthquake caused a tsunami that covered cities. Then 25 years later in New England, the sun was completely blacked out by noon. They called it New England's dark day. That's not all. Over the years, we have had a number of blood moons where the moon appears red. So that right there fulfills all of the points in the sixth seal, meaning we are now onto the seventh seal. 
the final one. In our ninth spot today, we have the underwater cities. Within the next couple of years, a number of big cities and places are predicted to be underwater, like New York, Key West, Florida, Fiji, Bangladesh, Miami, Florida, Bangkok, and New Orleans. Environmentalist Jeff Goodall had this to say about Miami. There's virtually no scenario under which you can imagine Miami existing at the end of the century. Conditions are getting so bad in Miami that the city may have to soon raise its structures to stay above water. In fact, it's believed the sea level could rise anywhere from 10 to 30 feet by the end of the century. For Key West Florida, it's said by 2060, over 60% 60 of the livable land there will have been flooded. In 2100, 95% of livable land will be flooded. And in 2100, 95% of livable land there will be flooded. And then we have Bangkok. Bangkok is sinking at a rate of more than 1 to 2 centimeters a year. Currently is only 0.5 to 2 meters above the water. Much of Bangkok is already lower than the sea level, so it's believed that it could be fully below sea level by 2030. These are all terrifying statistics, and most of it is due to climate change and the sea levels rising. In our 8th spot today, we have outer space. It's crazy to think about how small Earth is in comparison to the entire universe. At any second, some massive asteroid could come hurling down towards the Earth and kill us all. Well guess what? NASA has said that over the next couple of years there are going to be more close calls. As in, big asteroids will be flying closer and closer to Earth. All we need is for a rogue one to come directly our way and we're toast. Moving on to number 7 we have Nostradamus. If you're a long time subscriber of this channel then you should know who Nostradamus is by now. For those of you who don't know, well then you gotta subscribe to our channel and binge watch all our old videos. Just kidding, but Nostradamus was a famous seer and prophet. He wrote a book which included all of his future predictions and a number of them have come true already, which is freaky. Now according to Nostradamus we are currently headed towards the end of the world. First off he predicted that a worldwide famine will occur. He said and I quote, After great trouble for humanity, a greater one is prepared. The great mover renews the ages, rain, blood, milk, famine, steel, and plague. Is the heavens fire seen a long spark running? Well, we are already seeing great trouble for humanity with the pandemic, so that part has already come true. And the pandemic has already forced millions of people to rely on food banks. But it's about to get much worse. Then he also predicted more natural disasters, and then finally it will all end with a zombie. Zombie apocalypse. Isn't that just peachy? In our sixth spot today, we have the futurists. A bunch of futurists believe that 2021 is the end of times, but they never told us how it's going to happen. They just predicted it and then left it as that. But here's the thing several months ago, people discovered that in the Ethiopian calendar, 2020 is actually 2012. And remember that huge scare we all had back in 2012 when everyone thought that the world was ending? Now clearly that didn't happen, but if they're right and the world is going to end in 2012, well, this year is 2012, which means we're all dead by 2021. Isn't that great? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Baba Vanga's predictions. Baba Vanga is another famous prophet in history. In fact, 85% of her predictions have come true, so she does have some legitimacy behind her name, which makes this next prediction very scary. For 2021 and the upcoming years, Baba Vanga predicted great disasters. She said, and I quote, the world will suffer from a lot of cataclysms and great disasters. The consciousness of people will change. Difficult times will come. People will be divided by their faith. We are witnessing devastating events that will change the fate and destiny of humanity. Great. Now she didn't say what exactly these devastating events are, but we should buckle our seatbelts. Because she also said that 2021 will be filled with great suffering and disasters. Coming in at number 4 today, we have the natural disasters. Climate change is a very serious issue. We're at the point of no return. And according to scientists, this means that we will be faced with more powerful, extreme, and deadly natural disasters. For example, we got wildfires. According to environmentalists, we are going to experience warmer and drier conditions and increased droughts, which wildfires thrive in. But we have more to worry about than just forest fires. Massive hurricanes and tsunamis will be on the rise. I mean, just recently we were hit with Hurricane Ida. This hurricane flooded New York City and New Jersey. They saw levels of rain they have never seen before. Residents were left trapped in flooded cars and basements, and tornadoes whipped through the air, destroying towns and homes. And like I said, it's only getting worse. Moving on to number three, we have the apocalypse. 
according to a number of different ancient Indian texts, they believe that time is comprised of four great seasons or yugas. The final one is called Kali Yuga. Some believe that this yuga is still thousands of years away, so we don't gotta worry, but others believe we're currently in this yuga, so we do gotta worry. Here's the thing. This is the final yuga. It's said to be filled with disaster and conflict and sin. It's also supposed to mark the end of the world. Towards the end of the yuga, there will be a third world war where millions of people worldwide will lose their lives. This will mark the apocalypse. The only good news is that the Kalki avatar will come to save the world and end the suffering and bring upon a new universe slash a golden age. Coming in at number two, we have Disease X. This is an unknown disease that scientists believe and anticipate could wipe out all of mankind. They don't know what this disease is, but after analyzing the current state of our world, they are convinced it will happen in the near future. We are setting up the earth to be a perfect environment for a new outbreak to occur. World Health Organization Committee Science Advisor John Arne Rodigen says that the next big outbreak will be something that we haven't seen before. The World Health Organization then goes on to say that it's only a matter of time before a new extremely deadly disease wipes out the population. There are so many different strains of bacteria and viruses, they could easily just mutate and form a new, even deadlier disease. And in our number one spot today, we have the unbelievable weather pattern. Just last month, for the first time ever, rain fell on the summit of Greenland instead of snow. This is scary evidence that Greenland is warming at an alarming rate. Scientist Ted Scambo said, and I quote, What is going on is not simply a warm decade or two in a wandering climate pattern. This is unprecedented. Continuing on, he said, and I quote, We are crossing thresholds not seen in millennia. And frankly, this is not going to change until we adjust what we're doing to the air. A major UN climate report discovered that the burning of fossil fuels is what is leading to Greenland melting. In fact, Earth has lost 28 trillion tons of ice since the mid 1990s. That's a huge amount of ice in a small period of time. If the ice sheets keep going on this path and keep melting, the Earth could be destroyed before we know it. Mm -hmm.